Good, you're back. I'm Neom, and today's episode is about Tycho Brahe. Let's get into it. In my research, I found about a hundred sources on how to pronounce this guy's name, and they all differed from each other. Tycho Brahe, Tycho Brahe, and even Tugo Bray. So I decided to run with Tycho Brahe because, well, because it's my video and I want to say brah as many times as possible before the video ends. Hey brah, want to go out for a taco brah? Why are you late brah? Close the gate brah! I already ate brah. He took your bait brah. We just lost steak brah! I think you get it. Tycho Brahe was born in Denmark in 1546 to Ott and Beat, or as she was known at the time, give me a beat brah. Okay, I'm done. Tycho was abducted by his uncle in his early teens, who paid for him to attend the University of Copenhagen, which was in Copenhagen. His parents must have just been like, eh, because they certainly had the means to get him back if they'd wanted, his father being a member of the royal court of King Charles III, and Beat, or Beat, being a member of the aristocracy. But Tycho didn't seem to mind, and he flourished in his studies. Though his interest in law, which he had originally set out to study, waned, when at the age of 17 he witnessed a solar eclipse and noticed that the projected dates had been way off. This sparked an astronomical interest in astronomy, which he pursued for the rest of his life, but not before getting into a sword duel with his cousin over which mathematical equation should be used to decide whether Tycho was a Capricorn or an asparagus, or something like that, I don't know, I kind of skimmed it. During which, Tycho lost the better part of his nose before the two made nice again. For the rest of his life, Tycho wore a metal prosthetic over what was left of his schnoz. Early claims say that the nose was silver, but fairly recently his body was exhumed and the nose was found to be brass though it's argued that the silver sniffer could have been stolen and replaced. Either way, it was no swarf off his nose. He doubled down on his pursuit of astronomy, and within a few years had built his own small observatory, which led to his discovering the first recorded supernova at the age of 26. This was a huge discovery, since at that time, it was still widely accepted that celestial bodies were completely unchanging in size and location. From the publication of his discovery and his ties with royalty, his fame and influence grew. In 1576, Tycho married Kirstine Jorgen's daughter, who, despite her unfortunate name, was not Jorgen's daughter. Three years later, King Frederick II of Denmark gave Tycho a bunch of money and the island of Vin, where he built a huge, highly specialized, heavily fortified research facility and observatory, and even built his own small paper mill to supply him with stationery for his research. Now, many sources end his story about there, explaining how he went on to live in Prague after King Fred 2.0 passed away, how he assisted Johannes Kepler, and so on. And they don't even bring up the moose. Now that Tycho had all this money and his own private island, he started to show his more eccentric side. At some point, Tycho must have gotten lonely in his fortress, despite having a wife and several assistants of, <clears throat> shall we say, various shapes and sizes. So he decided to invest in a pet moose, as one does. The moose assumed the role of pet perfectly, even reportedly trotting alongside Tycho whenever he was in his carriage. Where exactly was he going in his carriage? Your guess is as good as mine. Tycho's moose was not just unique in its mannerisms, but also in its diet. Somehow, it developed a taste for Danish beer, which Tycho would generously accommodate. Too generously. Word inevitably got around that there was a moose on the loose, and Tycho was asked if it could be borrowed to entertain guests at a party of a nearby nobleman. Again, how nearby can they be when you live on an island, and how do you get the moose there? No clue. Nevertheless, the moose caboose made its way to the party. Of course, it wasn't long before they started serving the moose its favorite beverage, because what else are a bunch of drunk aristocrats going to do in the 17th century? Apparently, the bartender decided that, since the moose clearly wasn't driving, it would be okay to keep it well supplied. But no surprise, eventually the moose was like, here, hold this. And then... Well... There's no real good way to segue from that, so I'm just going to go ahead and jump in and bring up Jep. Remember those assistants we talked about earlier? Jep was a dwarf that lived in the complex with Tycho and company, who would regularly eat off the floor under the table as Tycho and his guests were dining. He basically acted as a court jester and occasionally as an oracle. Somehow, Tycho got it into his head that Jep could see the future, even though if he could see the future, he probably wouldn't have been there in the first place. Clairvoyant or not, having the executant little person eating off the floor isn't exactly what people of that time would have called woke. It's unknown what became of Jep when Tycho's funding and favor with the new king ran out and he was booted out of the country. Tycho made his way around Europe for a while until he was invited to Czechoslovakia and offered the position of official astronomer of Prague. Two years later, Tycho had too much to drink at yet another party and developed an immense urge to use the bathroom. At that time, it was considered very rude to excuse yourself from the dinner table, so he only had two options. I'll either hold it in 
or I'll die trying. Guess which one ended up happening. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like, subscribe for more content, ring the bell to be notified about new videos, and comment what you want to learn about next. I'm Neom, and I'll see you next time.